Alrighty, it is August the 18th, and it's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to say welcome to Search for Signs After Dark. My name is Gary Willing, and as I always like to do after I welcome you to Search for Signs, because I am really excited that you're here, I also want to encourage everyone to do some research for yourself. Dive into this information if you've heard it before, learn more about it, but if you're new to this information and you want to see if there's any truth to this information, investigate it for yourself, and then and only then will you see if there's any truth to it. If you look in the description portion of every one of these videos, there are links that talk about this information in some way. And you can go through all of them or some of them or whatever, but the two at the very top, the Share International site, you can get the best background information there than you can from any of the other ones. And if you don't want to necessarily sit down and just read and read and read about it and you want to listen to another video, there's a video link directly underneath it that talks about this information, and it's an interview with Benjamin Krem, and it's an extraordinary video. And I learned so much from it, and it was, it was great. So hopefully you'll listen to it too and learn something uh, at the same time. Now you wanna come back and join the discussion, post your comments, post your questions, let me know what you think, let me know what you have to ask, and I'll try to answer it in the next video. And then if you wanna get those questions or comments to me via email, just email me at searchforsignsatmail.com. All right, now, if you have heard these videos before, you'll notice that I have a totally new background photo for this video. And the reason is, is because of the comment that came my way. All right, this is coming from Alan. Stock market crash prediction was unimportant. Such crashes happen all the time. Such crashes does not stop exploitation, but rather make the poor even poorer. Krem made so many wrong claims that now his whole story is very questionable, if not unbelievable. Not only predictions, but also claims that are, from a standpoint of scientific and common knowledge, wrong. So the reason why I, ch I put this uh, picture in it rather than the picture I normally use is because this is a t-shirt that I have. It's my favorite t-shirt. It says, believe in yourself even when no one else does. Love, Bigfoot. <laughs> Hopefully you find the humor that I find in it, everybody, but especially you, Alan, um, based on what you had said. Now, I understand your, your frustration. I understand your concern. And I even understand you, you doubting what Benjamin Krem said. But I'm believing in myself, even if no one else does. Um, based on my own personal experiences, I know this information to be true, but I don't expect anybody else to. You know what I mean? And if you believed it at one point and you don't now, it's fine. It's natural understandable you haven't seen the changes that you were hoping to see now but i i will say this alan if you're listening to this the reason why you said what you said is because your heart is ready for the change your heart is ready for peace your heart is ready for justice guaranteed you wouldn't be thinking it about life in this way if you hadn't had it if that wasn't the case i guess is my point if your heart was closed to the world right you're concerned about the poor being exploited. True. You want justice, right? Now, the one thing that I would say, and I talk about this in, in pretty much every video, uh, Alan, is the historical significance, but also the historical um, uh, proof that what Maitreya is saying is true. Without sharing, there will be no justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. And then again, without peace, there will be no future. That's the statement, right? That's the truth that Maitreya says. But the first part of it, without sharing, there will be no justice, right? And without justice, no peace. Is that historic, you know, is, is there any proof anywhere that that is true? And yes, there is. And if you look at one of the links that I put in there about the Marshall Plan, they don't talk about it in this way. But if you look at it and just look at it from just this perspective, okay, Look at the nations. Go read the Wikipedia page. I think I have the link still in there. If, you know, but if not, just look it up on Wikipedia, the Marshall Plan, and, and read about the nations that participated in it. Those nations have been at some point at odds with one another or even at war with one another. But ever since the Marshall Plan, none of those nations have attacked one another. There is goodwill amongst those nations, which from the master's point of view is the lowest aspect of love. Or peace is another way of saying peace right? So there's historical evidence. You wanted, you know, you talked about scientific, 
you know, from a standpoint of scientific and common knowledge wrong. That's, you know, a truism that, that Ben spoke about, about the principle of sharing. And then if you, you know, you want to see the changes in the world, just as Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. If you want to see this, the ending of exploitation of, of the poor, then talk about it with people. You know, talk about the need for justice if you're not doing it already. It's useless to wait for other people to do it first or Maitreya to do it first. Talk about it now. Help bring it about. You know, it will at least give you some sense of there's some action going on because you're doing something about it. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And this goes for anybody, not just for you, Alan. It goes for me too, right? Talking about it, the need for this. Everybody really wants peace. I don't know anybody that doesn't want peace. I know some people that talk about bluster, you know, they always have this kind of blowhard bluster about shock and awe and this, that, and the other. And they love the idea of the American military. But when you get to the heart of it, nobody really wants to see another country just blown to bits. And if they do, maybe they're mentally unstable or something like that. But for the most part, most people don't want that. But how do you ensure, how do you guarantee that there is peace? Well, bring about justice. How do you bring about justice? And, and do some research and look at it. That's why I always encourage everyone to research this information, what I'm saying. Look at it. Is the, does the principle of sharing bring about justice? Well, if you look at the Marshall Plan, of course it does. And then if you look at what Benjamin Krems talked about with the principle of sharing, that it isn't communism, it isn't socialism even. It has to do with nations giving of resources that they've been exploiting from other nations and, and hoarding from other nations. But it's not going to happen, Alan, until humanity sees the absolute necessity for their own survival to do it. It's not going to happen. But you can help, and this goes for everyone, you can help bring this about by talking about it with people, the need to do it. When somebody, you know, listen to your friends and family when they talk about the world and, and all the hopelessness in the world and those kind of things, and talk about it and say, look, what do you think the world needs? And people are all over the board. You know, we need the, the, to close the borders up. Well, I guess I guarantee you what would end illegal immigration is the principle of sharing. End it. Totally. Gone. It would even end, for the most part, the drug trade, human trafficking. It would end all that stuff because it would bring about justice in the world. Ben's master said it would literally end up most of the human ills in the world at a stroke. <laughs> It would end hunger. It would bring about justice. It would end crime to a greater or lesser extent. It would make people feel at ease with one another. It would, bring, it would also bring about trust amongst the nations. If you look at the Marshall Plan, those nations trust one another better than they trust other nations because they, they tried the principle of sharing 70 some odd years ago. What would happen if the United States did it with Iran or North Korea? Would it bring about trust? It would, guaranteed, it would bring about trust amongst those nations. Then we could solve the problem of the environment, but not until then. How, is it, how are we going to solve the problem of the environment when we're all competing with one another? You see what I'm saying? So it's necessity. Now, the crash that you talked about, yes, you're right. Crashes do bring about, it, it, it makes the, the rich even richer, Right? But this isn't just a crash. This is the total collapse of the economic system that we have, the tyranny of the economic tyranny that we have, the end of commercialization. Now, Maitreya has even said that the markets have their place. Commercial, you know, capitalism has its place, but within proportion. Right now, it's totally out of proportion. But commercialization in and of itself, in every aspect of human life, in medicine, in education, in social services and in, in, in food and those kind of things need to be gone. But it's not going to happen until the, the system totally collapses. Now, the other thing, too, and this is a scientific fact, that the, the solar system moves around the cosmos. And we've been, our solar system has been in an alignment with one of the constellations of Pisces. And it's moving out of that and moving into, under the, into the alignment under the uh, constellation of Aquarius. Now, if you have heard about the Ageless Wisdom teachings, you know that all is energy. You know, um, uh, Einstein talked about it in that way. And a lot of, you know, um, astrophysicists talk about the, the, the truth of um, 
all is energy. And according to the Age of Wisdom teachings, the energy emanating from these, these constellations is what builds the society and the civilization that we have. And we've been living under the influence of Pisces, which is a strong, potent personality at the expense of everybody else, right? And our systems were built upon that. So that's why we have the democracy that we have that's built on, on competition and greed. We have the, which is collapsing. You can see the, the existence of, of it collapsing. Well, what's going what's gonna to replace it, right? A more cooperative political system. You know, and, and but that will only come through the principle of sharing. Same thing economically. It's built on greed and exploitation, right? That's what you talked about. That's your that's your frustration. So it's collapsing in and of itself because the energies that built it were moving away from it. They're beca- those energies are becoming weaker and weaker and weaker, which is causing the the destruction of of the economic system. That's why my tray always says that our political leaders, our economic leaders, our generals have no answer to the crumbling what's you know of the of the markets of the of what of the political systems around the world. They have no answer to why the, why it's destruct, self-destructing upon itself, right? And they have no solution to fix it. So the real problem is, the real concern from the masters is what does humanity do when that system finally collapses? That's why these masters are here. That's the solution that they're going to give us to try the principle of sharing. It will change life on the planet Earth nearly overnight. And if you don't believe it, just wait and see what happens. But do some research. Look at it and see if the principle of sharing does bring about justice, Alan. And you'll see, if you read about the, about the Marshall Plan, you'll see that it did. Do I agree with everything that Benjamin Krem said? No, I don't agree with everything that he said. But he, he did predict a lot of things that came true for sure you know one of the things that that Maitreya talked about that came true was the end of the cold war the fall of communism that happened now we look back on that no oh, of course that happened but Maitreya made that prediction during the height of the cold war he also made a prediction that Nelson Mandela would be released and that happened at the time that it was never thought possible even Nelson Mandela himself never thought he was going to be released from prison. But, but ben, uh, Maitreya made that prediction. And it's published in Share International long before it happened. Now, the economic crash that they talked about, that we can kind of see some of the effects of it and, and so forth. How long does it take for an economic you know, system that we had today, commercialization that we have today to collapse? It's going to obviously take a while because it's everywhere it's like the matrix. It's everywhere. You can't get around it. You can't, you can't um, circumvent it in any way right now. That's why I think it's taken so long. If it was a military, imp, imp, militarily imposed system on a, on a group of people, it's very easy to see who's got you under their thumb. But economically, it's very hard to see it. You, we all have to deal with it. We all have to contribute to the system just to get by. Does that make sense? To you know, in order to live, you can't. Most people can't just go out and hunt for their own food and drink water out of the streams and so forth, like we did hundreds of years ago. You can't do it, right? So we're all in in plugged into the system, but the system will collapse because the and this is something you don't necessarily have to agree with, but you know, the system according to the masters, the system will collapse on its own because the light of the energy of Pisces, which brought it into existence which created the system, is becoming faint, fainter, 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 and there's a new light coming in. So it's just like the old adage, or the old scientific adage, that a white car cannot exist in green light. It's the same thing. It's the same truism. So hopefully that helps. But all right, now, but thank you very much for the comment, and hopefully that addresses a little bit of your concern. But I do understand why you, you think this. And, you know, I would suggest, if I can make a suggestion to you, you know, you don't have to buy 100% into it, but you'll be surprised when you see Maitreya. I think it's going to happen sooner than most people think, even though it's been taking a long time. When it finally does happen, people are like, oh my gosh, I'm not prepared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I've been reading like I should have been, or I haven't, you know, uh, you know, have, I'm not ready. But it's, he's going to come just, you know, he's going to be, start to be recognized by people here pretty soon. I, you know, I'm almost 100% sure about it. But it might take longer based on the free will of humanity. 
you know, which is another issue that we have to deal with. But anyway, thanks for the comment. Now, um, this is coming from uh, somebody who said, Hi, Gary, what is it like when you were in the presence of Maitreya? Were you ever scared? So to answer your second question, no, I was never scared under no circumstances why I ever, was I ever scared of my, you know, Maitreya when I saw him. The time that I asked Maitreya if he could have a UFO appear f for my family, and it, it flew right over my brother's house in very close proximity, I was never scared. I was always filled with joy, you know, of it. Now, I will say this to you. What was it like when you saw Maitreya? You know, I, I've posed this as a theory. I'm not saying it's true. I don't know if it's true or not. But, you know, if you have a general interest in this information and perhaps have heard about it and maybe didn't do much with it, but you heard about it and you come back to a video that I put up and then you post a comment or a question or so forth, you, more than likely, you've seen one of the masters or Maitreya. You might not remember it. I've had experiences with Maitreya that I didn't remember until after I started really studying this information. And then it kind of crept back up in my memory. I was like, holy crap. That's why I always recommend to read um, these stories that people published in uh, Share International. And you can go to the Share International site and read it. A lot of them might draw your memory. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... The experience that I had with Maitreya has been, it was, I was, I felt like I was surrounded by joy and love the whole time. I might not have recognized him as Maitreya or thought it was Maitreya until after he was gone. But it was like I was kind of walking on air for a while. And that was my, that would be the best way to explain the experience. And most people that I, I talked with over the years that had experiences with Maitreya, they had the same sense about it. He's the Lord of love. But it's just a taste of what it's going to be like when he's out, known for who he is in the world. I guarantee you that much. It'll be that experience times, you know, I don't know how much, a lot more. <laughs> you know, it'll be like it's on steroids because he create just as like all, all these masters do. They create a familiar, but they cre it's a it's a self created thought form. It's not really them. And then they can send a little bit of their energy, a little bit of their love, and just that little bit can change your life, you know. Now, I will share an experience that I didn't have, but somebody that I know had um, some years ago. She was sitting on a plane next to uh, the Master Jesus. And she was complaining about George W. Bush, who was the president at the time. And she was talking about how stupid the guy was, which I can kind of agree and kind of get. You know, he, didn't, he wasn't the smartest president we had. And when she was telling him Master Jesus, she didn't know he was the Master Jesus, but when, he, when she was telling him this, he said to her, he goes, well, imagine him surrounded by love. And she goes, why would I surround him with love? I need to surround him with intelligence. And he said, well, it is the love wisdom ray. And if you know anything about the rays, it is the second ray is the love wisdom ray. They're, they kind of are two sides of the same coin. But he said, it's easier for people to change when surrounded by love. So when we see Maitreya, we're probably already experiencing this, uh, even though we don't really know who Maitreya is. If those of us who have seen him on TV and perhaps haven't recognized him, we'd have the same kind of experience. But when we know who he is, it's going to be in intense. We're going to, it's going to make it easier for everyone to change, to be the better, the better version of themselves, you know? When on the day of declaration, it's Maitreya himself said it will be as if, if his love surrounds and embraces all of humanity. What will that be like? How will that change people who are perhaps hard, hardcore bigots or very cold-hearted people? Will that change them? Of course it will. They'll open up their heart in a way that they perhaps weren't expecting it. It'll be a flip-flop change like Ebenezer Scrooge in that story, the Christmas story. You know what I mean? It'll, it'll be totally different, you know? The, the, we'll change, a lot of us will change in ways that we didn't think possible. But it will be because, just as the Master Jesus said to my friend, it's easier for people to change when surrounded by love. So I love you guys. I'll surround you with love too. I know Maitreya surrounds his love around everybody too. So he'll, he's, he's surrounding your, his love around you too. But I will, I will leave you with this. It's something that Maitreya said to me a long time ago. Uh, you, you asked me about you know, my experiences with him, and I'm sharing this with you. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of hope. But he said to me, he goes, you'll see me on TV real soon, and we're going to change the world together. You guys have a good one. Talk to you soon. Take care. Remember to take action. 
and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.